Hi, this is Shadow Child. Welcome to my studio in uh, Cambridge. And uh, today we're going to go through my remixes because there's two versions of uh, Dua Lipa, Hotter Than Hell. now is the um, the first version of the remix which um, uses the whole vocal normally when I get a remix I'm quite choosy with vocals not for any kind of real negative reason but I just prefer to work with the kind of musical side of the track as opposed to the vocal it depends on how the vocal sounds as well this one's very poppy so I just felt that I couldn't really bring that kind of pop vocal into my world without it's still sounding like pop but actually to be fair it ended up sounding um ended up sounding great so the artist is, is Dua Lipa um and she's got a huge voice you know great in that world um but I had to kind of make everything kind of fit a lot of people have got stacks of just ideas that are just loops that I might come back to one day and I actually the day before I started the remix come across this old loop um, which is just literally some drums that weren't great and it was just literally a um, an arpeggio looping round coming from the um, fab filter twin plugin which I haven't used a whole lot I love all the fab filter processing but I haven't really used the synth very much so so this is the the synth sound and I just ended up playing like an arpeggio so this was before the remix like this was years ago so just basically it was that um, and because I had it in my head from the night before I changed basically put it in the project with the remix parts and changed the, the key so that's the synth everything is kind of based around around that there were lots of parts that came with the remix as well. Um, I wasn't really sure about using any of them other than bits of vocals. There were some good vocal effects and things, but there was things like this, like uh, cellos, steel drums, which, like fine in the original obviously, but um, for me, I had some piano as well, which, not too offensive or anything, but just not something that I would use. So I literally just used the vocals off of this um, remix and off the original and uh, based it around that arpeggio. I use Reason all the time for my, for my drums as well. So that's why um, Reason is also open here. I learned to do my drums using this old style step sequences. So I use the Beat Step Pro as well for that because um, it's got the old sort of step sequence on there too but it's just how I prefer to do it I can get something rolling really quickly in there normally as you can see on the screen there's a couple of uh, there's actually three drum machines here I normally layer things up a lot more so you might just get kicks on, on one re-drum percussion uh, on another one and then hi-hat cymbals on a third one just so I can kind of separate things but this one I was obviously a little bit lazy everything's all on one and it was just working so um so yeah i just basically started building my drums up there's a few drum parts in logic as well um, so i'll just set up a little loop there all my drums get mixed separately as well through the logic mixer so they're rewired i can run 64 pins into the uh into a logic mixer, not that I'm using that many. So there you go. There's the drums that are coming in from Reason. There's this kind of subby thing, which isn't really a bass line, but it's it's part of the percussion, but it just gives you that kind of throbbing that's in the track. 
and then this it's not even a snare, a snare it sounds like a bit of a woodblock really uh, so yeah so just build up my drums that way you can see in uh, reason you can actually do all your sequencing or basically use the sequencer in logic to to use reason like a plugin but I don't I just do it this long way round typical of me but um, it works quick quick enough for me so yeah that's how I put the drums together this basically this kind of rumbly thing that you just heard uh, so that's what it was That's the whole loop. I just took out some individual notes out of um, out of there. So you've got, you can just hear it underneath there. So that's that. Then back in Logic on the drums, there's this little loop, which, sorry, that's the wrong one. So it's, it's literally just a little loop that's actually in Logic. Uh, and I, I've changed it a little bit by pitching some stuff as well and I always change the dynamics of it if I use a sample I don't want it to sound like it did so but I, as you can hear it's just kind of giving a little bit of uh, kind of vibe in the, in the background it's kind of layer things together also got this tambourine loop to kind of brighten things up uh, which also also features quite heavily much more heavily in the dub version that I'll show you in a minute than it does in this I'm actually using some sounds that are for machine but I can bring any obviously WAVs and whatever so the machine library I use in reason which some people might frown at but I don't get on with the MPC way of doing things so I load the machine samples into uh, into reason just something I ended up doing it's a mixture of my own samples and um, and um, stuff that's from sort of sound banks and whatever as well. It's more just about vibe really, I think, with drums. Like some of these drums aren't really just standard drums. I like things that kind of, like to use sounds, like that snare sound that's in there, that just kind of sound a little bit different. You know, that, that snare's not really kind of standard. It's not a clap sound, it's not, you know, um, just to kind of give it a bit more character really. Um, there was this little vocal as well, which was in the, filtered down there so that literally is, is as it was in the original part so I've just kind of looped that section up um, and stuff so we'll just play through the track a little bit more oh the little yeah or hey sample sorry is from um, the parts as well so I've used, used that as well So that's kind of the backbone of the track there. Um, I wanted a bass sound that was kind of um, quite analog, heavy, not a sign, but something with a little bit more kind of character to it. So I used uh, Jupiter 8 for that. So it sounds, it's just a triangle way from, from Jupiter 8. Um, and it's got various little bits of um, processing on there. I don't think I used lots of that. But I'm, I love uh, spring reverbs, tape delays, all that kind of stuff. And actually, this one that's part of the um, pedal board in Logic is is really good. One called the Spring Box. It's got a sort of enough character to it to not sound like a plugin, in my opinion. A little bit of weight on the bottom end, coming from the the Pool Tech, uh, which is on, from UAD. Uh, and that's that really. So that that's what forms the the bass in this version. But, but yeah, that's the actually that EQ is is um, before the pull tech. So you've got some pull tech going on there as well. So there's a little bit more weight even on top of this as well. The Jupiter Ray is obviously nice and fat, big, warm sound from it, but. In amongst those real subby, uh, that kind of pulsing effect that's coming from here that I showed you just now, it needed to kind of stand up to that. So there were some some low frequencies that I kind of needed to 
to boost to kind of fit in. So yeah, so that's the bass, uh, obviously. And then it was about when do I use the vocal? Because this vocal is very, well, it's a commercial pop record. But yeah, I'll just play a bit of this where the vocal drops in. It's a great vocal, obviously. It's it's just making it less shiny and more more of a vibe. You know, it's kind of opposite to her performance or to her kind of goal with with the original vocal. So the verses sound really good. Um, you know, I'm not, I wasn't worried about them. It would literally when we head into the the chorus, everything really jumps out of her vocal. You know, it's a great performance. But again, I want to kind of rein it in a bit. So there's a little layer in there as well with the classic uh, bit of a pitch down there, which I've just done using uh, the P shift, pitch shifter in, um, in Logic, which now looks a bit like that. Um, so that literally just goes off on a bus there. And I've got this other one, which this effect that I've, I made ages ago for myself, it was kind of my own little, uh, little thing that I've used in quite a few tracks now. Um, it's normally got a phaser on it and a bit, a little bit of um, bit crush as well because I love the love the decimal, but I've taken it off of this. But it's kind of got this nice, gives you nice big kind of trail off. Let's see if I look at the. Uh, So if you want, you've got this nice kind of big, crazy reverb doing what it's doing uh, there as well. So yeah, the vocals again, I've taken a little bit off, a little bit of the shininess off the top of the vocal because it was so overproduced, like for pop, you know, a lot of pop is, is made that way. Um, so it was kind of like literally raining it back in by taking a bit of the top end off. Um, And there's something that always kind of ties sections together in a track. If you kind of go off in a different area, which is what happens in the dub, which I'll show you. Is, a, is this the old vintage sort of high string note? Which is just running out of, um, out of logic, basically, out of their library. But I find that it kind of, you've got different things, kind of different transitions happening in the track. The high string will just kind of tie the sections together. So you've got this next section, it breaks down. So you can really hear the Jupiter 8 bass there as well. Everything slowly kind of gradually comes back in. I did use this part of this, part of their strings as a pad sound. I just put a side chain on it as well. So that just kind of uh, filters up nicely. So you kind of get the gist with the vocal version of this track. It's it's it does what it does for me. It's not something necessary. I mean, something I love. I love this track, but it wasn't necessarily something I was going to play out in my DJ sets. So for me, it was about creating something that I would play out, obviously. So let me just close these down and I'll open up the um, the dub. So the idea of this was almost to remix my own remix, which sounds bonkers, I know, but um, to, to use, so that, for instance, the arpeggio that's in there from the, from the twin, the Fab Filter twin synth, it's basically um, being treat, treating that like a remix part. Um, so my own programming is like a remix part. So I brought that into here as well. You've also got the bass, the Jupiter 8 bass, which doesn't feature in the whole verse, in the whole track. 
in this version. Um, it just comes in in the breakdown. So this was all about having a bit more of a kind of a, a banger for the for the DJ set. So starts in a similar way. But it builds into something very different. So as I said, I've used the same tambourine, but I've kind of brought it out in the mix a little bit more. And I also started to cut up her vocal a little bit. So this is the one that obviously existed in the other version as well. And you've got this cut up vocal. Now I've had some problems with this because I've gone from a different computer to this one to do this today. So uh, just unusually the timing of these vocals was out slightly. But I'm pretty sure I fixed it earlier on. So, yeah. So these vocal chops here, very, very simple, but really effective. So we're just heading down a completely different road with this version with the dub. So there's no real bass line to it, but you've got that kind of rumbly, subby business going on. So if I go back over to Reason, you can see it looks very similar, obviously. Because I've kept the the backbone as the drums, the kick, and um, you know the first those first drums that you heard in the other version. I've added these 909 hats, which I did um, using a re-drum as well. Just standard stuff. Just to kind of give it a different a different feel. I actually put those rumbles, as I've called them, into Logic this time. I wish I could tell you why I did that. I, I don't remember. <laughs> but they're in there. They're not running from uh, from Reason this time. So yeah, I'm kind of reworking my own version, reworking the vocal version. So the tambourine had to come up to sit nicely behind those hi-hats because they're quite shiny and quite dominant in the mix. So they're a lot louder the tambourines this time. But all, all the other little bits and bobs still in there, just that little loop as well. So this is where I come back to that high string sound that brings the breakdown into, into play. So this sound here, just a simple high string note. You can see I've literally held down one MIDI note. Now that will annoy a lot of people because you have to keep going back to, uh, where are we? Bar 97 there to kind of start that playing each time. But there's a little trick which is um, pretty handy. If you go into uh, MIDI in uh, preferences, go to sync, MIDI sync project, and then MIDI again, because it's a slightly different menu, you've got this tab here called chase. And if you tick this box, which I don't know why it's unticked, who would want it unticked? But I can start that string, it's, although it's one MIDI note anywhere, it will just come in. So like, there's a few people I've shown that to and they're just like, I didn't realise that. Every time I want to hear that, I have to go back to the beginning, unless you make it audio. So here we go, this is what's familiar from the vocal version that I just, just showed you. That repeating pad. The string which ties both worlds together, the kind of bouncy sort of house and part and this kind of dreamy part where the arpeggios come back in. And there's not a whole vocal at all, there's just little bits of her, her kind of ad, ad libbing basically. And the Jupiter 8 comes in as well. I was hoping for this kind of big like moment, sort of five, six o'clock in the morning moment where people might leave the club and like the sun's up or the sun's coming up, whatever. It's like one of those sort of summery. Classic sort of uh, 
Shadow Child moment before it all drops back in. back into a groove it's quite simple but it's so effective on the dance floor and that's kind of what it's about so uh, one other thing i did add wasn't just the hi-hats it was a, a real clap just a sample of a clap um because although i'm lucky to have all these sort of drum boxes and stuff here there's an essence of how of that's in house music at the moment and the last few years which has been very sampley so you know certain occasions things like this i will definitely use samples because i want it to sound like a like a like a sample not like the real thing because the real boxes real drum machines have a characteristic to them which you definitely want in certain situations but in in a remix like this i wanted that kind of raw sort of loopy um sample -y sort of vibe to it so that's why i've just stuck a simple clap sound to layer underneath uh, the other sound there it is. So that's the original one. There's a bit of a clap sound in there as well. Mix them together. So that you can hear now when you hear this version, you can hear exactly why I did this for it to be something more for a dance floor. Not that the other version isn't, but I personally don't play big vocal tracks. I'm happy if other people want to play them though. So like, and radio and stuff like that, you know, sort of embraced the other version the vocal version i try and everything I, I, that i inject into a track i try and make it sit somewhere so that's where it belongs and it doesn't clash with anything else as well because that's important i think when you're trying to get a mix right um is everything has its space literally if you look at um what's happening with the sound on an eq like this if you put the analyzer on try and make things have their own space on that on the spectrum on the equalizer basically because that's going to make your job so much easier when you're mixing down and it, and it is quite kind of minimal it looks like a lot of tracks here because there are things that all the all these gray ones obviously i haven't used so uh, it was easier to see in the other version there's only a few tracks but i just find that um i just find that giving everything its own space is is really important um and um frequencies and stuff you know you just again there's not a huge science to it i think you can overthink it i think it's just a case of using your ears and and also listening back on more standard speakers or listening back on your iphone with your earphones in or taking it in the car you know my cars i always say it's part of the studio i always like to have a go and test everything in the car you know because you know there there's unless you're in a club jumping about to it that's where most people will listen to your music. They might stream it even through their iPhones. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a good, or, or listen to a laptop, through laptop speakers, you know, everything needs to kind of have its space within that. Um, so yeah, you can make your job definitely a lot easier with, um, you know, picturing how an EQ might look with things having its own, each sound having its own kind of space. I used also, the UAD, I basically stick this, I mean this this is my own, uh, I work with this on basically, um, a limiter. Well this is the maximizer. But I work with it on because I want the vibe, I want to feel how it might sound. That's part of the excitement when you're, when you're working on a track. So I obviously when I send it off for mastering, take it off, bring this down to like between six and eight or whatever it, it might need. But my drums are normally squashed together through the um, the drum bus. Uh, so yeah, it's there. So I normally squash those together. I normally got something on there to kind of keep everything nice and kind of squashed. So even though I bounce a pre-master without this on, not everything is really spiky. It's normally quite boxy looking wave still because of my, because of my drums. I, I couldn't explain all this stuff as well as you'd like me to. I just know what sounds great and what, what makes my drums sound great. You know, I didn't I didn't go and learn all that stuff. I learned everything for myself. So it's all trial and error, which I think sometimes is the best way to to kind of learn and to kind of find your way. It's always been the same with me, you know, with all, all the outboard stuff as well, especially is just experimenting and 
you know, just finding out what something does. And then if you have a sound in your head, you can go straight to it and remember certain things. I think it's, there's a lot to be said for being taught certain things, but I just think, it, you know, you need to find your own workarounds with things as well. I think that's quite important. You know, it's easy to try and find, go on a forum and find like, type it in and just be like, how do you do this? How do you do that? How did so-and-so make that sound on that track? It's just like, play around it's not it's pretty easy now to kind of do that stuff you know you don't have to sit in a room with a 64 channel desk and loads of processing behind you to get a, a pad sound sounding gritty or whatever you know and find some inventive way to do it it's it's all here it's so quick and easy to do um so yeah that's my, my advice is to just learn you as much as you can yourself this is Shadow Child and you're watching Point Blank TV.